Tonight, I'll address the looming decision weighing on everyone's mind. And I'm not talking about Mix It Up Day. Then, I put the college board on notice, and not in the vocab that they want to hear. And finally, a retrospective on one year ago today, and how I haven't changed one bit. Open wide, baby bird, because mama's got a big fat night crawler of truth. This is the Colbert Report. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get right down to it. Nation, we're living in a historic moment in time for our community. Next week, we'll put democracy in action and exercise just one of our many God-given rights. Free will meets the will of power, and the decision, though it will be a difficult one, lies squarely on your shoulders. That's right, I'm talking about... Now, there might be some rogue third-party candidates. Taekwondo? Yoga? Mmm, no. Let's be realistic. This is a race between two obvious candidates. Core training and weight room. One is the agent for change. The other, more of the same. So let me go on record by saying, I support core training, always have. Nation, there are too many wild cores running around this school. We need to whip these cores into shape. If our students are meant to stand tall and strong in this world, how can they do it with flabby tummies? Besides, if students need help with their lifting, how about they do it where it counts? But whatever mandatory athletic agenda you subscribe to, make sure you decide your own fate next week. Consider the alternative. Like any good teacher, I believe that if you're not scared, I'm not doing my job. So let's run down the top threats facing students and see if we can't wipe that peaceful smile off your face in something we like to call the Threat Down! <laughs> threat number four, Halloween. This week we learned that this so-called holiday is really just paganistic harvest worship. Co-opted by the Catholic Church, masked by spirit worship, plastic costumes, and Mexican skeletons. Appropriated by the greeting card corporations, big candy corn, so that little kids can get a sugar high, and young teachers can live out their filmmaker fantasies. Teachers, enough with the videos. If you keep this up, we might run out of time for what really matters. Threat number three, college. Too long has the looming threat of college plagued our peaceful community. What evil force is transforming our promising seniors into distracted zombies in the fall and carefree ne'er-do-wells in the spring? I sat down with college counselor Arthur McCann to find out. Roll it, Jimmy. Hi there, Mr. McCann. Thanks for taking the time to answer a few questions. Give me $10 on the giant. Are you finished gambling? As a college counselor, what advice would you give to seniors about to graduate from high school? Oh, I think all graduating should, seniors should um, should get on the get in the road, get in the car, and drive across this nation. Seriously, with gas prices at an all-time high and global warming threatening our very future, <laughs> many do. Uh, and yes, you can. All right. Next question: Why is it that most students who graduate from high school go on to attend college? Well, college has become a somewhat of a rite of passage. Sounds tribalistic. What's the result? This is a period in time where uh, social causes outweigh economic causes or um, other factors in terms of one's political affiliation. So um, young people tend to be very socially liberal. Exactly. It's right in the name, liberal arts. Should we really be sending our nation's youth off to these liberal brainwashing factories? Let's face it, most college professors are pinker than the inside of a grapefruit. I think college professors would like to feed that more. Feed what, exactly? Many do. Uh, and yes, you can. 
Why go to college? That's a good question. Thank you, sir. What's this I hear about the Ivy League? Well, it's interesting you mentioned the Ivy League. Uh, coworkers of mine like to refer to it as uh, the climbing vine schools. The pun being, um, Ivy is merely that. It's a plant, it's a climbing vine. Excellent usage, sir. Do any seniors choose not to waste their time and money on worthless degrees? We do have students who do not go to college. Thank God. Every year we seem to have one or two students who opt to do something else. Who opt to not only take a gap year and then go to college, but perhaps pursue um, becoming a rock star full time. Or pursue working at a barn. Shoveling manure certainly prepares you for adult life. I'll ask you one more time. Why go to college? That's not a question that I necessarily have the answer to, but... Let me put it this way. What could college possibly prepare you for that you couldn't learn on your own? Binging. There you have it, nation. Straight from the mouth of a professional. Seniors, skip college. Embrace the rock and roll lifestyle. But do whatever you can to get rich quick. That way you can become the conservative you were born to be. If all else fails, you can always become an educator. Which brings me to the next threat plaguing today's youth, teachers. These bossy know-it-alls won't stop with their relentless homework, quizzes, and polite collaborative discourse until you're just as well-read and miserable as they are. Do your best to smile and nod until they finish all that yapping and let you get back to your mindless chatter. And remember, when seeking out extra help, Flattery and ass kissery will get you everything, even that A you think you deserve. And finally, the number one threat facing American students, dogs. Not just any dogs, faculty dogs. These bloodthirsty killers will stop at nothing until they've ravaged everything that we hold sacred. Stalking our hollowed halls and pristine lawns, yipping and pooping at will. Just look at their razor sharp claws their vicious fangs, their floppy ears and moist little noses, Jimmy! So I say, kill this dog now. Just look at him. Oh my god, he's so adorable! Oh, his, his eyes are like little buttons! Jimmy, take it down! Take it down, get it away! <sighs> That's about it for tonight, folks. One more thing before I leave. I'd like to send out my empathy to Papa Bear O'Reilly, who recently suffered the attacks of the liberal media when they released unflattering footage from his early broadcasting career. Show the clip, Jimmy. To end the show? Yeah. Yeah. All right, go, go. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it. Okay. In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave you with a... I, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! Thing sucks! In five, four, three. That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today. I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks again for watching. We'll leave you with Sting and a cut off his new album. Take it away. <laughs> wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> Yuck it up, Keith. Your days are numbered. Listen, not all of us TV personalities can be held accountable for what happens between takes. Papa Bear? I'm with you in complete solidarity. And to prove it, I'm going to air the footage from one year ago today that you didn't see. Oh. Oh. Hi, I'm the Lorax and I speak for the trees. Happy Halloween, masters. Yeah, I like that. What? Without lines. You want to do it without lines? You just want me to, to sit here and at the camera? No. Fine. We'll do it again. We'll do it without lines. It's fine. Give me. I can do this. Wait. What do you? What do you mean? Kiss the tree? What do you mean? Kiss the tree? What?
Fine, I'll kiss the tree, fine. Just do it again, do it again. I'll kiss the tree. I'll kiss the tree. I'll kiss the tree. Mwah. Mwah. There, okay, next scene. Next scene. Next scene. Next scene. That's it from the rapport, everybody. Good night.